and well, 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 welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watts UK99. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch these videos. All right, on to week five in the NFL season we go, and September was not my best month picking games. I don't know too many people who had that great of a month picking these games. The NFL just gets weirder every single season. So we're going to make our confidence picks. This week there are 14 games, so we will try to pick winners from 14 points all the way down to one point. All right, let's recap quickly. <laughs> week four, we went 6-10. and 10. This was embarrassing. Just 69 points for the season. We have a record of 30 wins and 34 losses, 299 points. Percent, Percentage-wise, we are in the 55.6 percentile, down 7.5% from last week. I have got to get off the schneid, and i got to do it this week. All right, so let's start picking our game. So the game that I'm going to wager 14 points on this week is the Arizona Cardinals against the San Francisco 49ers in Santa Clara. The cards crashed back down to earth. They, they actually folded like a house of cards, ironically. 14 points against a very questionable Washington defense. The Niners have started to get a little bit healthy. And even with Christian McCaffrey out in uh, Timbuktu, wherever he is getting uh, his both Achilles looked at, even with George Kittle having a rib injury, they can always seem to find a new weapon. Jawan Jennings is emerging. Ricky Pearsall is on his way back. Plus against Arizona, Brock Purdy in three games has a 150.4 career passing rating. Wow. Cardinals defense cannot hang with San Francisco. Give me the Niners at home. Number 13, we're going to travel across the pond, and I think it's going to be bloody brutal. The New York Jets versus the Minnesota Vikings. I pray to the Lord above that Aaron Rodgers' life is spared by the end of this game. The blitz by Denver last week was scary. The Jets' offensive line could not handle it. This offense seems completely out of whack. Brees Hall looks like he's running in quicksand. The wide receivers never know when Rodgers is going to throw a pass. But this Minnesota defense is even better than Denver's. And Denver blitzes the most in the NFL. Minnesota blitzes the second most in the league. Brian Flores, the defensive coordinator, I think he's got a uh, unique package ready to go for Aaron Rodgers. That sounded wrong. Anyway, uh, I think the Jets' defense can slow down the Minnesota passing game somewhat. But I don't know about slowing down Aaron Jones and Ty Chandler. I'm taking the Vikings with my number 13 pick. I just have next to no confidence in the Jets winning this game. Number 12, the New Orleans Saints at the Kansas City Chiefs, Monday Night Football. Yeah, the Saints have a dynamite offense. Yeah, they got off to a great start, but right now it's very hard to pick against the Chiefs straight up. They are undefeated. Throw an arrowhead, throw a national TV. Chiefs ain't losing this game. Number 11, the New York Giants at the Seattle Seahawks. Well, Big Blue is getting the extra rest, but Seattle has a very capable offense. Geno Smith, Geno Smith, averaging almost 300 yards per game, the most in the NFL. DK Metcalf just continues, to, he just gets better every year. I don't think the Giants can contain that trio of wide receivers, but the Seattle defense, they did get torched against the Lions on Monday. And that was the first, I would say, legitimate NFL offense that they had seen. And that Seattle defense, Mafe, Murphy, Williams, Love, all either limited in practice this week or not practicing at all. And Malik Neighbors, though, at the same time, Malik Neighbors may not play this week after suffering that concussion last week. I'm taking the Seahawks at home. Number 10, the Cleveland Browns at the Washington Command Skins, Jaden Daniels. Looks like he's well on his way to winning Rookie of the Year, maybe even getting a few MVP votes. Deshaun Watson just looks like a tragic 30-for-30 30 30 story. But Washington, they've also got a very aggressive defense. I think it's going to be a challenge for Watson to handle it. And Cleveland, of all teams, the Cleveland Browns are the only team to not score 20 points in a game this year. Their offensive line is still banged up. You know, Washington, I've doubted them all year. They keep surprising me. I'll jump on board. I say... They take this one at home. Number nine, the Baltimore Ravens at the Cincinnati Bengals. So oh, let's go with this one. I'm taking Baltimore. Now, Cincinnati can get right back in this race despite that 0-3 start. T. Higgins is back. The offense looks revitalized with him back. I know Baltimore looked amazing against Buffalo. I'm still a little bit worried about that defense giving up chunk plays. 
The problem is Cincinnati's defense is not much better. Cincy's defense is ranked 25th against the run. They're allowing over 145 rushing yards per game. They need to contain Derrick Henry any way they can. I just don't think they will, so I'm taking the Ravens on the road. Number eight, well, it's sort of the Bryce Young trade ball, the Carolina Panthers at the Chicago Bears. You know the Panthers have a little extra incentive to win this game, right? But DeAndre Swift finally decided to wake up last week against the Rams, and Carolina is last in points allowed on defense. I don't think they're stopping the Bears' offense. And, you know, Chicago's defense looking better and better, and while Andy Dalton might lead the Panthers to a few points, I think the Bears are just better. I think the Bears have a laugher at Soldier Field. Number seven, the Buffalo Bills at the Houston Texans. This is going to be a good one. Houston not quite clicking how a lot of a lot of people thought they would click. Uh, Joe Mixon and Damian Pierce are not practicing yet, though Joe Mixon may return for this game, and Houston's offense has not been anywhere near the same without him in the lineup. The Bills playing their second straight road game, and after getting embarrassed last week the way they did against Baltimore, I think I don't think they're losing two straight. Plus, Josh Allen has not thrown an interception yet this year. And on to our number six game in the AFC South, the Indianapolis Colts at the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Colts have not won in Duval County in eight years. Will that streak end? Well, I'll tell you what, Jacksonville's 0-4. They are reeling, and the Colts' defense ranks 30th overall. Now, Anthony Richardson is no sure thing to play in this game. He wants to play, but he's day-to-day -day with a hip contusion, a hip pointer, something like that. Maybe Joe Flacco can do the job in this game, but... You know what? Jonathan Taylor has a sprained ankle, a high ankle sprain. He may not play this game. If he was playing, I think I would take the Colts. But the Jags just need this one more. I think the Jags are going to take this one. So give me Jacksonville at home to beat Indianapolis. Number five, the Miami Dolphins at the New England Patriots. Wow. You got two lousy teams both on three-game skids, but only one of these teams actually expected to suck. I'm taking the Patriots at home. Now, the Patriots rushed for 355 yards in the first two weeks of the season. I think they're going to get that ground attack back on track, whether it's Antonio Gibson or whether it's the ever-fumbling Ramondre Stevenson. But Miami gave up 142 rushing yards on Monday, and I am shocked that Miami has found a way to make Tyreek Hill obsolete. Give me New England at home. Number four, the Green Bay Packers at the L.A. Rams. I'm going to take Green Bay, all right? Now, this is a very interesting game. It's just a shame that so many wide receivers are banged up for it. But the Rams are very prone to allowing the big play. The L.A. defense is allowing 9.1 yards allowed per pass attempt. That is less in the league and not good. They're also less in the league in run defense. And what happened last week? Jordan Love comes back from Green Bay. Throws for nearly 400 yards, four touchdowns, granted three interceptions, but he put up a whole lot of volume. I know the Rams can run the ball well, but I think the Green Bay defense is going to be up for the job. I'm, I'm going to take uh, the Packers in this one. Number three, the Las Vegas Raiders at the Denver Broncos. Denver is playing a home game for the first time in three weeks. They've got the mojo. The Raiders just have too many questions. I'm, I'm going to factor in that there is no Devontae Adams with a hamstring injury. Uh, I'm going to take the Broncos in that one. Number two, the Dallas Cowboys at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Micah Parsons and uh, and Demarcus Lawrence both hurt for Dallas. The Steelers' offensive line, though, they're dealing with a lot of injuries. But without their two top pass rushers, I don't think Dallas is making too much of an impact. And Justin Fields is getting better pretty much by the week. Last week, I know Pittsburgh lost, but he threw for 312 yards and a touchdown. Plus, he ran for 55 yards with two touchdowns. Also, Jalen Warren should be back in the Pittsburgh running game. And that Dallas defense, they give up a lot of yards on the ground. So give me Pittsburgh at home. And finally, number one, the game I got the least confidence in is the Thursday nighter, Tampa Bay at Atlanta. Well, they both won last week. Tampa Bay blew out Philly. Atlanta pulled out a tight one against New Orleans. I just don't think Atlanta's offense is where it needs to be, especially with multiple injuries on the offensive line. Also, Atlanta's defense has the lowest pressure rate in the league. It's like Matthew Judon. I thought they traded for Matthew Judon. Where's he been? But I expect this game to be sloppy and messy despite it being indoors. I just think Tampa Bay is a little more reliable, less flammable, even though they're 
they do have the short week on the road. I think Tampa Bay uh, gets this one, and um, there'll be some very angry Atlanta fans. You know, Atlanta sports fans are upset enough already. I think the Falcons are not going to help them get over the Braves. All right, those are my picks for week five. Got to have a big week this week. If you've got some picks, put them right down there in the comments. Everybody, thanks so much for watching. Remember, the Jets-Vikings preview is coming out soon, along with the bold predictions video for that game as well. Everybody, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you right back here with more content from you know where. The Wicker Chair.